This Locked On crossover is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Spartan friends, Spartan family, also Tar Heel Nation. Like we said, Locked On crossover over here. It's Matt Sheehan of Locked On Spartans over there. Isaac Shade of Locked On Tar Heels. And we're still dancing over here. We're going to talk about Saturday's game. 5 30 p.m on cbs in a little bit first something happened on friday isaac your tar heels over there you won what you dubbed the kevin guskowitz invitational the <laughs> women's tar heels they won 59 to 56 in an opening round game go ahead celebrate Look, take your victory laugh yep i i don't know that i can carolina almost okay. uh pooped this thing away down the stretch exciting uh, <laughs> yeah and uh carolina has struggled at the free throw line all season the, the ladies finish eight of 18 but thankfully uh right towards the end there they get lexi dinarski to the free throw line who hasn't missed one at the stripe since january and right. uh she and deja kelly salted away there so uh matt yeah just a, a tight game kind of you know the, what what the uh start to the our little weekend clash between the spartans and tar heels got off to just two things for the Michigan State side of things. Number one, probably not a great strategy to let the other team have 23 offensive rebounds. Um, and I know that Michigan State has challenged in the front court for this women's team so far. And number two, tough loss, but what a great first year for Robin Freilich. She's the first Michigan State coach to take the Spartans to the tournament in her first year in program history. First 22 win season in the last eight years and also a top four finish in the Big Ten after being voted to finish in the bottom four. So plenty of good things to come there. So just wanted to give a nod to the women's game that happened on Friday as we dive headfirst into what's going to go on Saturday. Now, Isaac, I got a little tweet here. This is from Chris Falica. UNC is currently a four-point favorite over Michigan State Saturday. Since 1985, there have been seven one-seeds favored by four points or fewer in the second round. Five of the seven lost outright, including Kansas last year against Arkansas and only Missouri in 1994 covered. So not to make this a betting segment, but this sets <laughs> up a good conversation. Yes, Isaac, when I read that off, do you have a chill down your spine for your Tar Heels or... Do you think it's time to rewrite some history and that there actually should be some comfort among Tar Heel Nation as they play essentially a home game coming up Saturday? You know, uh, Matt, I don't have the chill, and here's why. Because okay. the Tar Heels are 5-0 and all-time in the NCAA tournament against Michigan State. And yeah. Carolina, all-time, is 20-1 and in Charlotte in the NCAA tournament. But... One of, so one of these things has to be true, right? Like either the Something bears, to give, right? right? Like <laughs> either the bears tweet is going to be right, or either uh, the the history there. We'll see which side that's on. But look, I, I think here's the thing, Matt. Is this should be a great game, right? Just mm -hmm. even the fact that it is. Um, I think at, at FanDuel, our betting partner here on Locked On, it was three and a half in favor yep. of the Tar Heels last I looked. So even a little smaller than uh, the bear was talking about there, but. Um, Look, I, I know that it – and we'll talk about Michigan State, obviously, in a little bit, and I know it hasn't been the season that Spartans fans hoped it would be. But, look, everything changes when we get to this point and there's only 32 teams left. It's like you throw out what's gone on before and we just look at this game. So that's all we can do. And there's no doubt that you guys are a fantastic team. I mean, it's a one seed. There's no mistake right here. And you guys have great players, which we're going to get to in a hot second, but – Allow me to try to continue positive momentum over here on the Michigan State side of things. Where are the cracks with UNC? Where where do you worry when you put your head down on the pillow tonight before this game? What's going to keep you up a little bit tonight, <laughs> Isaac? Uh, the, the potential cracks for Carolina, interestingly, when most people think about the Tar Heels, they think offense and fast pace yeah. and all that. Carolina, kind of similar to Michigan State this year, has actually hung their hat on defense on the mm. defensive side of the floor. I think right now at Ken Palm, these two teams are sixth and seventh in defensive okay. efficiency, actually. And so Carolina um, has been locked in defensively. The issues have come like there was a stretch um, where Carolina went two and three in a five game stretch throughout ACC play. And the issue there was that the defense was not clicking and not locked in at the same rate as it had been. And so I think that is the, the potential crack in the armor if you want to if we want to put it that way is that if yep. Carolina is not locked in uh defensively because it is not like if we think back to the 2009 championship game 
for example, Matt, that team from Carolina was just a juggernaut, right? This is yeah. not that team. This is more like North Carolina's 2017 national championship team where they've got to play with an edge and mm -hmm. be the aggressors the entire game because they're just, it's not that level of talent. Not that they're not talented, but it's not like Tyler Hansborough running you out the gym. The 2009 national championship team could have been a three seed in the Eastern conference NBA playoffs <laughs> that year. That, that, that team, my God could bludgeon anyone over the head. Um, speaking of, you know, NBA roster talent guys. Yeah. Let, let's start talking about some of these good players over there. RJ Davis. Um, what makes him so good? I know that's such a stupid question, but like truly, like for, for those state fans that have not watched RJ Davis as much as you have, what makes him so dynamic and one of the best, if not the best point guard in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, it it very well could be that that's, that's the answer. Not even just one of that. He's the ACC player of the year. Yeah. One of the things that I love about him, Matt, is, for example, in Carolina's opening round win um, over Wagner, RJ Davis had 22 points but he let everyone get going in the first half and then he dropped 17 in the second half. And so he's like, not a guy that's like, Oh, I've got to come out and be the ball dominant guy. It's Carolina's path to victory in that game was asserting their advantage inside with Armando Baycott. And he was more than happy to let that happen. Um, and so you, you look at this um, postseason experience because between these two guys, RJ Davis and Armando Baycott, You've got two guys that were in the 2022 national championship game. Yeah. And so for RJ Davis, um, it, he feels like he's got this really good sense of when to call his number and when to be a distributor. For example, in the postseason so far, which is three ACC tournament games and the first NCAA tournament game, RJ Davis is averaging 23.8 points. And he, he's got 12 assists and one turnover. So it's like, it's this kind of thing, man, where it's like that that senior experience is shining through in both scoring when necessary, but being a facilitator when necessary as well. And R.J. Davis uh, is doing all of that outside, inside. He can score at all three levels. It's pretty in incredible. I, I hated that. I hated that answer. Every word of it. <laughs> <laughs> that sucked. Um, okay. I'm going to roll the dice tomorrow and see uh, how that works out. Maybe he's due for a bad game. I don't know. Who's to say? But uh, look, you talked about Armando Baycott for a hot second. I, I don't think there's like much to talk about. He is what he is. We've seen him for what seems like the last seven years now. <laughs> Honestly. But other than RJ Davis, other than Armando Baycott, and also Michigan State fans are familiar with Cormac Ryan. Last right. year he was right. at Notre Dame. He shot 17 of 18 from three point land like he was in Fuego <laughs> last year. So we know those three guys. Who have we not brought up that you think is also worth losing sleep over from the Michigan State side of things? For sure. The other two starters, along with those three, are freshman Elliot Cadeau, who was actually the point guard. R.J. Davis has shifted over to the two guard gotcha. this year. Um, Elliot Cadeau reclassified, so he should be a senior in high school right now, but he runs the attack. I think he will be, you know, of the 10 starters, the lone freshman on the floor to start this game on Saturday. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he, what he does is that facilitation role, right? Mm -hmm. He um, attacks really well, finishes well at the lane, gets it around to everyone else. He's not the guy that that right now is able to step out and hit it consistently. Um, so that's what you're looking for. But perhaps the most interesting piece of this Carolina puzzle is Harrison Ingram, who's the starting four. And it's really interesting, Matt, to be talking about this with you because all season long I've compared him to Draymond Green. Ah, so uh, he comes over from Stanford where he had played his first two years. Yep. And Carolina relies on him as a small ball four, does a little bit of everything. He he shoots it just shy of 40% from three. Um but that's not necessarily what you want from him uh, all the time, right? Um, in conference play, it was he, not Armando Baycott, that was the ACC's leading rebounder in ACC play as a 6'9 guy, yeah. um, but can play a little bully ball. If he's got a, a shorter defender on him in switches, he'll just back you down and either uh, facilitate or score. And so um, I think Harrison Ingram is a really interesting and key piece for this Tar Heels attack. 
There we go. And we're going to flip the script here. Isaac is going to grill me about my Spartans here in a hot second. But first, I need to talk about the Spring Cleaning Champions over at Manscaped. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code LOCKDOWN for 20% off and free shipping. Not too shabby. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It features a dual LED spotlight to guide you through the darkest of winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. You don't want to get nicked up over there. Heavens no. My goodness gracious. And if you hate the mess, well, hey, not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower. Shave in the bathtub. Take this thing into an ocean or a lake who is going to stop you other than the authorities just power through it just do do whatever you got to do get 20 percent off and free shipping with code locked on that's all one word locked on at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with code locked on at manscaped.com nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants also need to talk your ears off about game time folks if you're in the charlotte area I urge you to go on game time right now because this is the greatest ticketing app out there. I love it for a whole list of reasons, but up at the top, how much money they can save you. I'm a pretty frugal guy over here, Isaac. All right. I like to save my money. Same. Same. I know. I'm going to an event later that week. I'm checking game time throughout the week, checking out their flash deals. Not just games, too. We're talking concerts, comedy shows, theatrical performances. If it's a ticketed event, odds are you can find it at game time or also like me, if you're a procrastinator, you don't have tickets, you're just walking up to the stadium with nothing, go check out their last minute ticket deals. They are the best in the business and they want to save you money right off the back. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKDOWN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. It's last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Oh, man. Matt Sheehan, Isaac Shade, a lockdown crossover as we get ready for a round of 32 games between game, I should say. Let's not play multiple games. This isn't the NBA. Between Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans and Hubert Davis's North Carolina Tar Heels. And Matt, uh, here's what's interesting to me as I've started to think about this game. You look back to last season, North Carolina, preseason number one, fell off the face of the planet, didn't make the NCAA tournament this season. Kind of a similar storyline for Michigan State. Preseason number four just yep. didn't have the season that any of us expected to have. Finished Big Ten play, 10 and 10. Just got to 20 wins in the uh, first game of the NCAA tournament. Matt, yeah. what what has gone wrong or what has yeah. not gone in the way we expected this season for the Spartans? Well, it's a good cocktail of everything, right? Like, that's what happens when you lose 14 <laughs> games in a season. It's not just one answer. So I'll try to keep it short. Number one. The front court going into the season without patching up that hole in the transfer portal ended up to be a little detrimental to this team. And some of that was hurt with Jackson Kohler breaking his foot. He missed the first few months of the season, but still it's not like he was averaging 15 and eight last year. Like he was averaging two and two. I I don't even think, you know, having a normal season for him would put Michigan state on the right side of having a good front court. They are offensively inept. No offense with the three guys they have, but defensively, As of late, that they showed that, okay, they could hold their own, which gives us a little bit of hope. Also, the the shooting has been a roller coaster throughout the season, namely with Jaden Akins. Now, he absolutely lit up the Bulldogs yesterday. He absolutely torched the nylon, which is, oh, we haven't seen that in a month consistently from Jaden Akins. So if we can see that Saturday, that's going to give us a lot of faith, too. It's been up and down with the point guard play, our backup point guard, five-star Jeremy Fears. Shot over holiday break in his hometown, Chicago. He has not played the last few months. So as if it couldn't get any worse, we have that going on. Tyson Walker, is there an injury issue? Yes, probably. But then again, he's throwing down windmill dunks and warmups. It's like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> and then, Isaac, you, you throw in, there. there's just been some weird games too. Like at Minnesota, you're shooting below 50% of the free throw stripe. The opener against James Madison, you just make one three-pointer, where if you just make another one, you don't go into overtime against them. So, look, it's not to say that every game's been a fluke. No, no, no. We do have to look in the mirror for a lot of these issues. But it, it has just been a... Kind of disastrous cocktail here uh, in the last few months here, Isaac. So yeah, that's what we got. But hey, you know, it's March. Time to start yes. trying. 
What's, exactly. what's going to pop? And, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it's weird because the computers, the computer metrics have still loved Michigan State. Currently loved them. Yeah. At Penn Palm. And so it's this weird uh, dichotomy between what the computers see and I think what the eye test yeah. has been telling us. So One second. Oh, my God. This, st- this sign. Oh, my goodness. I love this sign behind me, but it plays music whenever any Michigan State sport plays. So I don't know if it was a baseball game that just started, a softball game that just started. So that's what we just saw going on behind me. Anyway. That's great. Wow. I'll just restart. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, Matt, it's so weird because I, like the eye test – has told us that it's not been Michigan State's best season, but the computer numbers really have loved the Spartans. Currently 16th at Ken Palm, and so it was weird. Matt, like, how were you feeling going into Selection Sunday? Were you, like, concerned? Were you feeling confident? Where was your brain space at? Confident would be probably the last uh, adjective I would use to describe me on Selection Sunday. But I'm also on, like, the more cowardly side of things. I I get scared of anything in the month of March. So at the end of the day, when you're a nine seed, normal sane people will say, what was there to ever worry about? Like it was a no doubter, but yeah, when bubble teams like Virginia are announced beforehand and you know that you're kind of close to the bubble, I'm starting to panic and wondering, Oh, Oh, it's just over over here. But no, we heard our name called, but going into the end of the season, losing four of your last five before the big 10 tournament, it got to scary season, of course. And then you see all the bubble action going into Selection Sunday. We know that story. But, no, I was not confident. But I'm not going to say, like, it's not a deserved trip to the tournament. They did play one of the hardest schedules, of course, in the country, right? Like, they do have a really nice wins against Baylor, Illinois. Even the Indiana State game at home turned out to be a Dude, very, very right. good win for Michigan Absolutely State. Absolutely, it so, did. That's right. So they, yes, they deserve to be in the tournament. But, yeah, with the 24 hours leading up to Selection Sunday, that whole bubble frenzy, <laughs> to say I was confident, oh my God, I'd, I'd be lying through my teeth if I told you that. So I was sweating, sweating big time. Well, good. It's always yeah. good to have the Spartans in. Keep that long, 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 long Tom Izzo streak going. And and Matt, yeah. that's the next question. In at, at some level, there's got to be this thought of, look, it's Tom Izzo. Let's just get in, be one of the 68 teams. I don't care where we are, who we're playing, who we're matched up against. If we can get in. Can we get some Izzo magic? What do you think about that? I, I like, I don't hate it. And we've kind of seen it throughout the whole year. And that, that's not to say that like, oh, it's time to start trying, but I'm starting to get those vibes from this team because look, it was a bad start to the season. They lost all their marquee games like against Duke, Arizona. He's throwing the loss against James Madison too. And then we're going into this neutral court Baylor game, knowing that you have to win that to stay on the right side of the bubble. And they blew the doors off of them okay and then you go a few more weeks yeah you have some decent wins you have some road losses okay hey illinois at home this is one of your last chances to have a really good quad one win they played great against illinois okay and then here we go we're kind of sleepwalking through some more games hey you got to win against minnesota to really lock your spot they look great in the second half against minnesota and then here they are first round against mississippi state it's like i Maybe they just have been sleepwalking because, once again, they did walk into February completely eliminated from a Big Ten banner. So what was there really to play for? They already knew that they were kind of going to be in the tournament. But I I don't know. It's kind of infuriating watching it over here because, (laughs) I mean, it starts as a theory of like, oh, maybe they're kind of just like sleepwalking and they only try for games they really know they have to win. It's like, damn it, they just beat Mississippi State by 20 and look incredible doing it, just like they did against Illinois a little bit ago, against Baylor a little bit ago. So, I don't know. I don't, it sounds so ridiculous and meatball headish to talk like that, but I, that, that could be where we're at with this team is they only, you know, roll out of bed for the games that are worth rolling out of bed for. Well, Matt, you mentioned Tyson Walker, right? Like team yeah. leading score, 18 points a game. Uh, I, I love it because I think we're probably going to get a Tyson Walker, RJ Davis uh, guarding each other situation. Yeah. I'm hopeful that's what will happen because that'll be a lot of fun. But you look at the rest of this starting group, man, and it is a, a veteran experienced team, just like North Carolina outside of Elliott Cadeau. You've got Malik Hall, who it's just great to see him healthy and playing yeah. basketball. Jaden yeah. Akins, who you talked about, AJ Hogard. But interestingly, we've seen, seen a little tweak in the starting lineup the last three games as Coach Izzo has inserted Carson Cooper into the starting lineup. Matt, do you have you liked that switch in the front court? Has that been helpful or how has that changed things? 
Yeah, I, I, I like it in theory. Like Mati Sissoko, really uh, tough season. I, we're just going to leave it at that. So you put Carson Cooper in because defensively he's been your best option in the front court. But like not the last few games. It, it's it's weird. It seems like whoever they start, it's they just freaky Friday it. <laughs> and now Mati has looked like the uh, premium defender down low, the better rebounder between him and Carson Cooper. So I don't know. It seems to just be whoever's coming off the bench. It's not like you're picking between two outstanding options, to put it bluntly. So it's just kind of riding the hot hand in the front court. And we see that through the substitutions throughout the game of, okay, well, he he observes what happens on the court in the first 10 minutes and then kind of makes the front court decisions from there. Kind of an underlying storyline, too, if I could just throw this in really quick about Please my Spilko. He's Muslim. He is observing Ramadan. That's so, right. look, you, you play at 12, 15 the other day. Like, yeah, sure, we could stomach a few hours of no water or food. This at 530, I, I do wonder how much gas he's going to have in the tank wow. for this game. So uh, best of luck to Mahdi out there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Kudos for the discipline. Yeah, honestly, that, that's a great point, Matt. And that does yeah. always play. There's always players in the NCAA tournament that that plays a factor. with. So we'll, we'll wait to see. Uh, what what kind of role that is? I know uh, NC State had something like that on Thursday night sure. with Modiara as well. So it'll be really interesting to watch. Now, Matt, there has been all sorts of great happenings throughout the NCAA tournament. We obviously had the Kentucky upset on oh, Thursday yeah. night. Obviously, we should probably also make a prediction for our game, along with maybe a key storyline to watch that might play a big factor. We'll talk about all of that in just a second. But first, friends, I got to tell you about the good folks at Nissan who bring to you this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. And right now, that is UConn. Who, Matt, are you ready for this? Has a 50 to 15 lead on Stetson in the first half in real time with a minute 17 to go before halftime. Okay. These Yukon Huskies <laughs> can only be described as an armada. This top seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there. So it's no wonder they've landed the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite having four of the six power six conference champions in the East region along with them. Well, if you want to get in on figuring out if you can be an Armada too, take the Nissan Rogue or Pathfinder or Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, Matt, we got a game to talk about. Then we got a little bit more NCAA tournament, just yeah. musings to look at. So as you look at this game, Michigan State, North Carolina, as you said, 5.30 Eastern on CBS on Saturday. Right now, FanDuel has it, North Carolina by three and a half. What is maybe the key storyline or thing that you think influences this game? Two words, Jaden Aikens. That's really it. I mean, he when he is knocking down his three-point ball, he's Michigan State's best three-point threat, right? So you take him away, sure, Tyson can hit the three. It's been a little up and down this whole year. Trey has shown, but man, when you get a starter like Jaden Akins to just knock it down from three like he did against Mississippi State, whole nother team, whole new ball game, helps with the spacing too. And not just on the offensive side of things, but Jaden Akins defensively too. I do wonder if that's who they're going to assign uh, R.J. Davis with. I wondered about so, that. We will see. There's there's no shortage of options here. That's one thing that we got going really well for Michigan State is A.J. Hogarth can play some defense. Tyson Walker can too. But Jaden Akins, it, it might be a date with R.J. Davis for him. So that is the key to the game over here. And he's Lansing. Jaden Akins, please don't tell us that was a mirage in the desert on, on Thursday. Please tell us that you're back, young man. So that's that's the key over here. How about you guys? Yeah, what's interesting, you know, I talked about the experience that you have in R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott coming in. For Baycott, in yep. the postseason so far, averaging 17.8 points, 12 rebounds, has a double-double in every one of these games, 59% from the field, 79% from the free throw line. Matt, if he gets a double-double in this game, he will tie Tim Duncan for the second most career double-doubles in NCAA history. I mean, it's Good just wow. bonkers. But yeah. that said, that's the expectation for the Tar Heels, I think, is both those guys to perform. So the question yeah. for me is, who is that third guy? Is it Cormac Ryan? 
uh, who, as most people know, was a streaky shooter. Is it Harrison Ingram having a game like he did in the first game against Duke? Is it Jalen Withers coming off the bench, who was the third leading scorer in the first round game for the Tar Heels? That, that's what I'm watching for, is who is that third guy to yeah. join Baycott and R.J. Davis? And, and I think that will be a key for the Tar Heels side of things. So, Matt, what's your prediction for this game? How's it play out? Uh, first prediction is me feeling like I want to throw up the entire day until roughly 7.30 p.m. But uh, <laughs> just to add another one to that parlay card, look, I, right now Torvik has this even tighter than three and a half. They have UNC winning 70 to 68. The computers, Ooh. Vegas, expects a close game. Spartan fans, I'm sorry. I, I pray that I'm wrong. But this game being in Charlotte gives me the heebie-jeebies. Michigan State has not been a good team on the road this year. And, yeah, let, let's face it, R.J. Davis is incredible. Armando Baycott could give a front court like ours fits. I'm going to go with UNC 75, Michigan State 67. A little late pull away there for the Tar Heels. Again, would be thrilled to join everyone here on Saturday night and be wrong. But I'm going with UNC here, unfortunately. Matt, what's hilarious is I picked the exact same score for the Tar Heels, but three more points for the Spartans. I had it Carolina okay. 75 to 70. So we are very close gotcha. yeah. on our predictions for this game. Um, I think it will be a tight one as all these lines are showing. And it's yeah. just going to come down to who can make plays in the final, what, six minutes of the game. And so uh, two experienced teams should be a lot of fun. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Matt. Yeah. Let's get over all of those nervous conversations. Okay, I'll try. And uh, what what has been the most interesting thing so far to you in the first day and a half or so of the NCAA tournament as we record at about four o'clock Eastern on Friday? It's a dead heat tie for Sanford, Kansas, which, by the way, on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, I had Kansas minus four and a half to close out a parlay. And how they went out of their way to lose that by a half point. It's okay. It's not like I lost sleep on that or anything, but regardless, oh, that was the last problems. thing you had. It would have hit. No, that that was post. just the last thing I had 22 point lead in the second half. Johnny Furphy on the line for two free throws to make it a five point lead to end the game. That's okay. Go ahead and clank that second free throw. Young man. I don't need that money anyway. Um, <laughs> but enough about my problems. There was another storyline in that game that maybe some more people care about uh, the worst missed call that we'll see all tournament. I'm yeah. just going to call it right there. So that is your one a and one B. Some local flair over here. It's Oakland beating Kentucky. I mean, it's cool. It's amazing. Oakland is actually 15 minutes from where I'm at right now. Metro Detroit and Greg Campy been at Oakland for 40 years. Michigan State has had an ongoing series with them for the last, God, like 20 some years. Wow. It, it has been quite something. Greg Campy, one of the all time people in college basketball, he was actually nice enough to burn up some time on our show last year. I emailed him out of the blue saying, Hey, before our matchup, do you want to join? He agreed. He called me like on the bus after the Boise State game. So like this guy, as salt of the earth I as it gets, it. has I never won it. a tournament game. And Isaac, you correct me if I'm wrong here. Did that not like really even seem like an upset? It just kind of seemed like Oakland was the better team that night. I mean, it could have been worse if they actually made some of their free throws. But as the host of not just Locked on Tar Heels, but also <laughs> Locked on College Basketball, two things. One, I, didn't Oakland just seem like the better team at number two? Did Greg Campy put a bullet in John Calipari's tenure at Kentucky? I, I, I want you to just unfold all that for me right now. <laughs> uh, well, the, to, to question one, it's so hilarious because we always ask this question, right? Like, who is going to be that name that you woke up Thursday morning yeah. not knowing that is now suddenly a household name? And right. it's Jack Golke, man. What a sure. performance that was. And I, I think that's the thing for me, Matt, is that I have expected Kentucky to lose – at some point earlier rather than later okay. in this tournament, strictly because of their defense. The only team in the power six that was worse than them in this tournament defensively is Alabama. Outside of that, the wow. only like 10 teams that were worse than them are all 12 seeds or worse. And so, I mean, I expected Kentucky to be able to score with people, but that defense, like that's what I expected from them defensively. Yeah give up stuff like that so um oakland really was i mean they just went out and Golki made shots but then they didn't rely on that matt they had other things yeah. that they were doing but to your point about a bullet in the head for john calipari look kentucky is one and four in their last five ncaa tournament games matt brutal <laughs> it, brutal before that saint peter's loss a couple years ago Kentucky was 19 and 0 all time in the first round as a top three seed. And then they oh. lose to St. Peter's as a two. And then they lose on Thursday night 
to Oakland as a three. And so at some point this off season, there are going to be very serious conversations in Lexington because that buyout is massive. I think it's still like 33 million, 33. Just, right? just 33 million. That's all. Yeah. But <laughs> like this is Kentucky basketball we're talking about. Right. And oh, yeah. crazier things have certainly happened. And so that yeah. to me is perhaps the biggest off season storyline that, that we're going to be tracking. It's crazy. I forgot who tweeted it out, but yeah, they, they tweeted out that it's a $33 million buyout at about like, I don't know, 10 PM last night. And I said that Kentucky will raise that money by 10 30 PM sharp. That, that, <laughs> That will not be a problem over there in Lexington. I know the Mega Millions and Powerball are getting pretty up there, so <laughs> track those ticket sales uh, in the greater Lexington area coming up here the next few yeah, years. Yeah, I think uh, we might see nice. some interesting uh, Churchill Downs movement this year. <laughs> 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 no kidding. <laughs> Derby, and that might uh, pay off some of that money. But, uh, Matt, going to be very interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, he threw all his freshmen under the bus again. And my thing Oh, that was that, great. That was awesome. Yeah. Here's yeah. my thing. It's like, you've made this freshman bed. My friend, you got to lie in it, right? Yeah, like. And Jay Wright said the same thing too. He was kind of backing up Cal being like, you know what? Like it's freshman laden. He was going up against grown men. It's like, and I like Jay Wright a lot. This isn't a slight against yeah. Jay Wright, but also with on top of Cal's comments, it's like, um, my man, uh, you have access to the transfer portal too, and you are the one that built this roster. You, you, John, you did. You you did this. So, and to have this be your problem last just like you said, four years, like uh huh. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions, that's a, what a shame. So, yes, 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 yourself. yes. Well, love folks, yourself. man, it's going to be a great tournament. We got multiple yeah. more weekends the rest of this weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out with Matt and I today as we preview what should be a great battle on Saturday early evening. Yeah. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. But until next time, gang, we'll both be back on Saturday.